there, mindful travelers. Hey there, mindful travelers. Welcome to San Antonio, Texas. So we are just off of Fox Park Trailhead, and we're going to do a brief lesson in a nature study. So for those of you who are homeschoolers or world schoolers or travel schoolers like us, you may be familiar with a woman by the name of Charlotte Mason. So she was a British educator who basically set the framework for homeschooling in experiential and alternative education methods. Um, this is something that we implement with uh, Sarah's schooling here and something we will incorporate with Adrian when he's old enough. Today we weren't really sure what to talk about. Um, we were trying to find a park that had some informative plaques that we could read to you and uh, do a lesson like we've been doing in the past, but we realized there was nothing here except for this beautiful path, a greenway, access to the Leon Creek back here behind us, and we decided, you know what, we're going to do a nature study today. So Charlotte Mason pushes nat nature studies for children of all ages, specifically younger ones like Sarah here, for many reasons. Uh, some of those reasons, I'm trying to remember all of them, but um, some of those reasons include that it gives your, it cultivates a interest in science, it makes science more interesting, it gives them the foundational, uh, foundational, uh, it gives them a foundation for formal science study, uh, it gives them a interest in investigation, so they are out here learning from experience and observation so it makes them cultivate this interest in investigating things around them and then it gives them a sense of stewardship and ownership in the world so it gives them that personal connection with things around them so when they're studying it formally as they get older they have that understanding and experience to draw on and sit back on and remember what it actually felt like to experience that. So that's what we're gonna do today. No books, no clear lesson plan. Sarah here has been practicing her observation skills and she's gonna go through some observations today and tell us what she's seeing here and we're gonna talk about why that's important and how that helps Sarah with her formal science study. So I hope you like it. Let us know in the comments below. If you're watching this on YouTube later, click subscribe, tell us how we're doing and we hope you show up live with us on Monday and Wednesdays throughout the fall when we're doing these lessons with Novel Excursions. So without further ado, here we go. Let's get going, Sam. All right, Sarah. So let's start off with what you're observing. So right now, I'm observing these little water bugs that look sort of like spiders with okay. six legs that are moving against the water. Those may be mosquitoes. Not 100% sure. Yeah. Okay. And... Do we know why they're able to float on the water? Yes, I think I do. Why? Because, one, they're so light, and two, because I think that they might have kind of little air-filled pads on their legs because a couple of days ago I was studying that um, there was a lizard that has these little flaps on its feet so they can run across the water so all they need to do is fill the flaps and then they can run across but okay. they need to be very fast. Cool, so we'll have to look that up and try and figure that out. It could also have to do with weight distribution. So you see how their legs are very spread apart, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a, um, a catamaran. Do you know what that is? No, I don't. So it's a boat that has, it's very wide. It's got two, look, look over here, it's got two kind of posts that go out like that and then the center comes across. So it's very big on either vertical or whatever, either post. Uh, that follows the flow of the water and then it's light in the center the beam is light so it distributes the weight across so wide that it allows it to float better and move across the water okay so it may have something to do with that I'm not 100% sure we'll have to look that up so what else do we see well I see the water um, and I see the wind pushing the water um, of the Leon Creek that way okay 
region called ripples, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which way do like which way does water typically flow? It typically flows downward. Downward. What does that mean? Like into the earth? Because that's down, right? Not exactly. Um. So when when gravity pushes the water, what does it flow toward? Rivers, creeks, all of it flows towards something. It flows toward the ocean. Toward the ocean, yeah. So going downstream is always toward a big body of water. So everything's working its way toward an ocean, okay? Mm -hmm. So I think going to your left is downstream given by the way the water's flowing, right? So what else do we see? I see these little... You need to turn around so we can hear you. We can't really hear you. I see these little bugs again right here. And I see that um, they have a couple of them that I can see have little black dots in the middle. Okay. So for the listeners here and whoever's participating in this uh, discussion, Sarah is working on being more clear with how she observes nature around her. And the exercise we did before we started this lesson, I told her, imagine I was blind and I can't see anything. So I went through explaining everything we saw in front of us down to the smallest detail, talking about every bit of color that I could possibly see. And that is what we're trying to work on. So Sarah, how about you imagine that? Whoever is watching cannot see anything and try and explain what's in front of you. Well, right now, what I see in front of me is small tree roots and some black and red ants. Their little right back here is black, and I see some small shells. Right over okay. here. Where are you and standing? Some rocks. Well, I'm standing in a partially muddy, like, it's pretty muddy area, and my heels um, are right here on a branch, and one of them is just about touching a rock right here under the branch. Okay. And it's give me, give me a bigger rock. picture. Tell me, tell me what you're seeing all in front of you. Give me the experience. Well, I see a lot of grass, and I see... Is some... the grass in the river? Or in the creek? Yes, there is. Oh, there's some grass in the creek? Okay. Yes. Um, and on the other side, on the other river bank, I see some little round leaves that um, go on pretty thin leaves, um, pretty thin branches. Kind of like, uh, I don't really, kind of like a tree. Okay. Like what about colors? What are we seeing in terms of colors? Well, I see some... Speak a little louder. I see some blue, and I see the sky reflected in the lake, and I see a couple of the clouds, and it's kind of murkyish, and I see a little bit of green and brown, and I see a little bit of gray over there on the tree. So, so we have gray trees and murky sky? Gray trees, sort of. Like, there's some kind of moss. I think it's a Spanish moss on the trees, which is supposed to be gray. And I see a murky river. And it's kind of murky, but I can still see right here just a little ways into the water. I can see a couple of small leaves, like this one. What and color are the leaves? They're typically fall colors, which is yellow, red. Um, the, most, um, the most rare one is purple, which well, does... Are you seeing purple um, leaves right now? I'm no, talking about what you're seeing right now. Um, I see brown, I see yellow, I see reddish leaves. Okay, so I that tells kind of us that orange. we're in what season? It tells us that we are in fall, and since there aren't very many, that tells me that this should be right about um, the
the beginning of fall. Okay, so the leaves have just started to fall. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, okay, cool. Do we know why the water is murky? What do we think? I think that there are um, like frogs and amphibians and stuff on the, um, and people who throw rocks in here or something. And there are amphibians who kick up the dirt and ducks who go to the bottom and flip up that dirt with their rib with their beaks and that's starting to get into the water and that's starting to like mix in. So, so there's a lot of soot mixing. and dirt and moss and everything else in the water, right? So did you know that water that's darker green is typically more nutrient rich? So when you see the bright blue clear water, it's typically void of or devoid of uh, nutrients. And that's something we learned about in, do you remember what it was called? The currents? Hmm. So I think it's the great conveyor belt, great ocean current or something like that. Sarah Bell? Yeah. Do you, do you remember? So remember. the way it flows. so. Water will flow for us in the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to be typically pretty warm, right? Because that's where it gets warm and that's where it uh, picks up a lot of nutrients and it will take it. So, actually, it yeah, it picks up nutrients as it's down south and then it works its way up north and drops off nutrients along the way. So, that's why it's clear down near Central America. Okay, what else do we see? Well, Right behind you, behind the camera, mm -hmm. right over here, I see some fern-like leaves on this grass-like plant. Okay. And I think that this is like kind of like hard because to the texture it feels hard and it feels kind of like a seed pod, which if I hold it close to the camera, you may see that it's roundish, okay. but it looks thin from... It looks almost like here. a spade. Yeah, That's what does. I would compare it to. Yeah. And this looks kind of like it's flat, and it's kind of hairy on the top part. I can feel that. And this looks like little flower buds right here so in this plant right here it has kind of thin leaves with little spikes on here okay. kind of if you run your finger back you can kind of feel them and so what processes do we know about that all these plants use well um they take in carbon dioxide that we breathe out mm -hmm. to make for energy and nutrients. And they also take in sunlight and use that. Do you remember what that process was called with the sunlight? No, I don't. Photosynthesis. Right. Okay, and they're green because of chlorophyll mm -hmm. in their cells, right? Okay, pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What else should we talk about before we end this? Well... I see a few small yellow flowers here, typically with um, six to six or seven leaves, um, petals. Okay. And if I look closer, um, I have been studying this. If I look closer, it looks just about like there are like at least four smaller flowers in the middle. Okay, do we remember what that's called? Um, the different parts of the flowers? I don't know if we've gotten there yet. I don't think we have, but... What do flowers have to... Pollinate? Okay, so they have pollen. They have pollen. And that and helps them what? It helps them pollinate each other. So like, let's say that there was a little bee, so there's also n something called nectar in there that they drink. So there was the little bee drinking its nectar, and it got all the pollen on its legs, and then it carried some of that pollen to the next flower, 
and drank its fill and it kept doing that over and over again and each time it picked up some and dropped a little off. Okay. So that's how they pollinate. Okay, awesome. Cool. And it's the same with all pollinators. Alright, well why don't you come back over here? I think we're gonna end this lesson for today. It was a great lesson. Stand there, Sarah. Stand back in your spot. So we can say goodbye. Okay. So do you like learning this way, Sarah? I really love learning this way, and I think that a lot of our mindful travelers, with kids or not, should come out here sometime and just look around and do that so they can try and understand nature better. Yeah, so we are huge proponents on homeschooling and alternative education. We find that you can do this anywhere you go. So we are travelers and we try and help people travel mindfully and purposefully. Um, one of the big things is that we are a family, so we like to help families travel and find ways that they can maximize their time out and still help the younger generation learn and set themselves up for the future. And we think there's plenty of educational opportunities wherever you go. And a simple lesson like this was just observing the world around her. So we had no plan today, um, but this is going to contribute. Stop. This is going to contribute to her science lesson that she is going to do when we get home, when we have connectivity to the internet. Um, she'll be able to draw on some of that experience. We're going to have her write down in her field notebook. That was something we didn't do today, but she does have a notebook and she'll write down these observations and then we'll discuss them later today. So we highly encourage you to look up Charlotte Mason and look up some of these uh, experiential learning opportunities. Definitely follow us on YouTube, join our group, uh, sorry, follow us on YouTube, but join our group on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash novel excursion. There we have conversation going every day, all week long about education, volunteering, travel, all that that goes with novel excursion. And we're trying to help families learn and we're trying to learn from you as well. So you coming in and telling us about your experience helps us better provide service to everyone else in production. Okay. Sorry for that. We lost connection for a second and we are back. So we just we just launched Explore London Adventure Guide. So that is another one of our adventure guides for the city of London. It has three routes in it, uh, handcrafted for you with tips and tricks of where to go, what to do, and what to see. Um, it's got local accommodation information as well as transportation information. Uh, that's all on sale right now for $5.99 for the next 30 days. That's our launch sale. Then it will go up to $10.99. So check it out at NovelExcursion.com forward slash shop and get your London trip on. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time as we say here at Novel Excursion, Sarah. Don't forget to travel mindfully. Bye. Bye.